different miles away. We have young, we have middle aged, we have old. A lot of us come together and we're what we are, the individuals that form Tempe, and we have to be in this together. So I would ask that as we exchange our ideas and our thoughts here today, that we please understand that it's not us versus you. It's not the police department trying to impact your quality of life or infringe on your beliefs or your, your religious beliefs or your music or which artists you choose to follow. It's all about behavior. And as chief, I understand that it rests squarely on my shoulder. I've been on the department for coming up on 33 years, coming up on six years as police chief. Tempe is a safe community. We have continued to receive outstanding support from our community. This last year, once again, well above 80% overall citizen satisfaction approval of the police department. That doesn't come without a cost, the cost of being out there day and night being professionals. Our crime rate has been reduced the last six years steadily in a row. Last year we did notice a slight uptick consistent with the United States, I might add, where across the board, throughout the United States, we noticed a slight uptick, uptick in crime. And he's not immune <coughs> to that. I talked about a vibrant community. People come to Tempe because we love Tempe. You like what it brings, you like what it has to offer. Our elected officials recognize that. They have given very clear direction to us as a department and to our city leaders. We want people to come to Tempe. We want people to enjoy our community. We want people to come to our, our restaurants and our establishments and to enjoy themselves at the events. Tempe, unlike any other city that I'm aware of in Arizona, we have about 340 special events a year. <coughs> Hundreds of special events. An awesome responsibility to bring literally millions of people into our community and keep them safe. And it takes yet but one incident like this, perhaps, where individuals chose to prey upon innocent victims and again act in reckless disregard for human safety and life that has brought us here tonight. Questions have come up. What's going on in Tempe? Do we have a gang problem in Tempe? Let me just talk about that right off the bat because it's the proverbial elephant in the room and let's just get it out there and talk about it. Tempe, as I said before, is a safe community and we're not immune to gang activity. That was recently demonstrated by this event. <coughs> However, put things in perspective, we are part of a larger issue here, folks. And if there's anybody in this room here today that doesn't believe that as a United States, we're not experiencing a problem with increased gang activity throughout the United States, then perhaps you're not in tune with really what's happening. The National Gang Intelligence Center, Department of Justice, found that in the United States last year, they had 33,000 documented gangs in the United States at the tune of about 1.4 million gang members. That was a 40% increase from the statistical analysis two years earlier in 2009. Let's bring that a little bit closer to home. Understand, Chief, that's the national. Let's take a look at Arizona. A report by the Arizona Criminal Justice Commission, Maricopa County Gang Threat Assessment, 2011 found that just within Maricopa County, 15 police jurisdictions, there are over 20,000 identified gang members. Urban warfare, I would say. <coughs> so we're all in this together. So when, it, when the question comes up, well, what about Tempe? Tempe's not immune to this. In fact, another report by the Department of Justice found nationally that in some communities gang members are responsible for the minimum of 40% of violent crimes and in some larger communities up to 90% responsibility for violent crime on our community. Who's the victim of gang violence? Our children? Perhaps? Perhaps gang members themselves? Perhaps? How about the families of gang members? How about their parents that lay in bed awake at night wondering whether their child is going to come home alive? 
It depends on where you're at. It depends on your state of mind. It depends on where you're at in our system. I've talked to many, many community leaders, some in Phoenix, that share great concern for what happened here in Tempe. Because again, this is a threat on who we are. I see a young man here with his guitar. Absolute, thank you for coming. Because this is what it's all about. To demonstrate your passion, your livelihood, to stand up for your rights, to make sure that this doesn't become a plea state. I get it. <clears throat> That's not what I'm here about. I'm here as a police chief to say my job and my responsibility to you as residents of the city of Tempe and to our great state of Arizona is to serve as your police chief and to keep your loved ones safe, to keep Tempe residents safe in their homes, to have our children to be able to walk up and down the street and enjoy themselves without fear of harm or being hurt. It's, it, we're all in this together. We cannot do it alone. So with that, I'm going to turn it over now back to Lieutenant Horn, but I can I make this pledge to you as a community, and I want Tempe residents to please listen carefully. I too am a Tempe resident. I've been raised in Tempe. My family's growing up in Tempe, and as I've said, I'm going on 33 years serving as a Tempe police officer. I doubt that there is anybody in this room that is more offended than I that these individuals have come into our community and taken this reckless action. Thank God nobody was killed. A grave to the arm, a grave to the head, one inch to the left or right, whole different story. So I would thank all of you again for coming here tonight. I ask Tempe residents to continue to provide your support to us. I thank others that may not be Tempe residents but have a passion for the art. Come here tonight to demonstrate your support of our community and your support of keeping our community safe. Thank you. With um, this microphone, can you all out in the lobby hear better? Does it matter? Yes? Okay. Uh, we'll use the uh, handheld. This is uh, uh, Commander Tim Hale. He oversees uh, Northside Patrol. He also has uh, crime prevention in a few other areas as well. Um, another part of this, to, to uh, as we've gone through this investigation, we've talked about the criminal part, but there's also uh, the term, which is not an actual term, but I use it just for uh, clarification, uh, kind of the administrative side of things as far as um, uh, what measures were in place at the, uh, at the club uh, that night uh, and that sort of thing. So Commander Hale is going to talk briefly on that and uh, cover a few other things as well. Uh, we're not going to get too far into the weeds on some of these things. That's for a separate, uh, separate venue. Uh, but uh, right now, I'll turn over to uh, Commander Hale. All right, can everybody, yeah, everybody hear me? <laughs> Good morning. I'm going to start back really quick on a quick recap again, just so that we can kind of remember where we were and what happened. So on March 2nd, that Friday night at about 11.30 in the evening is when our, well, just prior to 11.30, our first officer was rolled up on the scene who had called for service at the 7-Eleven, subject disturbing. He gets out of his car, he notices right away in the parking lot there's a lot of people gathered. There's a lot of people gathered along the wall, lined up for the concert. He's already concerned, and just as he gets out of his car, the shots start ringing out. And that's when he puts out the uh, call for service of shots fired. Lone officer in the uh, parking lot, and he can't see the uh, suspects, but you got people now coming to him panic that were just shots. And uh, it was a, uh, you can imagine being there, you know, by yourself, trying to deal with that mess initially. It was uh, quite the experience for him. The, uh, these types of incidents get very complex very quickly when you have that many people that are injured and that many shots that are fired. It's not like they pulled the trigger 16 times and 16 people got hit. There was a lot of rounds that were fired in that parking lot. A lot of people were running. A lot of people were screaming. And uh, at that point in time, we had probably, before it was said, we done about 63 officers ended up having to respond to this incident. We had 10 come over from ASU. We had helicopters from other jurisdictions assisting. The fire department is really having their resources and trying to provide triage for the group numbers of victims. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Get the head down in the news, please. <laughs> um, so, tapped out our fire department, but there was a lot of coordination that went on in those type of things. Because when you're, it's, life is first. We gotta, we gotta worry about the public, who's been shot, who is not. And protecting and preserving any evidence from secondary. 
So the fire department came in, great partners, did a fantastic job in trying to figure out who's been hit, where they need to go. Six different hospitals were utilized in, in a number of different ambulances. And uh, this went on until approximately four in the morning. And uh, that's when things just got started for investigations. Investigations rolled out with a lot of different detectives and uh, we've got reunification plans that have to go take place. Parents want to find their children, they don't know which hospital they're at. We have officers that are assigned to, to work the scenes, protect the evidence. Other officers are up on a manhunt looking for the criminals that did this. And, uh, you know, and it goes on and on and on. You can see the kind of resources that it takes. All throughout the night, still 99 calls for service had to be taken and, and responded to during throughout the evening. And so that's the kind of, of workload that got placed on us. And we don't want to do that again. So what do we do to try to avoid those types of things? And that's one of the questions that's been asked. What do we do? Well, one of the big things that we do is the department has been to talk about a security plan. Every time a business comes into the community and wants to open up a business, they go through tax and license, they go to our community development, they describe their plan uh, of what they want to do for a business, and, and once they decide you know, and, and kind of spell out to the, to the, uh, the folks in the city what they want to do, there's a few triggers in place that if they want to have an alcohol license, if they want to have a, um, a motel or hotel, or if there's certain things, if they need a security plan, they will send them over to the police department and say, you need to get a security plan in order to open up your business. This security plan is a great tool. A lot of cities have called this because they don't have it. They'd like to utilize it. We have to be very effective in dealing with and working with business owners. It's a partnership. We sit down with them. We talk to them about the security plan, what their business is going to be, and, and what kind of security needs that they're going to have, how many security officers they might need on any given night, and how the, if there's a formula that might escalate as far as how many people they need to hire based on the amount of patrons that they're going to be servicing and the type of venue that they're going to have. So the security plan is very thorough. And uh, it talks about uniforms and, and responsibilities and management that's required. Um, it's because we've, we've done this so many times. We are an entertainment community. We have acts and, and we have these special events that come in. And we realized a long time ago that we need a partnership with the businesses to make sure that we create a safe venue for people to come. And this is one of the most proactive tools that we have early on in front of this. If the businesses follow their security plan, know their security plan, and implement some order maintenance, these things can be avoided. And that's the concurrent investigation that was also taking place shortly after this shooting scene. Uh, these shootings were an aggravated assault on numerous people. At the same time, we're, con we're, con we're conducting a criminal investigation into the security plan violations of the venue. I think you saw in the newspaper where the owner was cited. And those are the kinds of things when we look at the, uh, the security plan and find out what happened that night, compare it to the notes of the investigators, talk to the business owner and find out what they have to uh, say, what, the, what their security manager, that's not mine. <coughs> Throwing me off there. <laughs> so we uh, we work with them and, and we figure out if there was any violations. And uh, if and I can tell you right now that the business owner was cited because we did find numerous violations of the security plan that just weren't being followed. Things that if order maintenance was done, if that would help to prevent these kinds of uh, things from occurring in the first place. But one of the things right from the get go is, is you know we have a lot of. Um, venues that we work with throughout the country. And uh, you know, some of them run some pretty large venues. And uh, they bring in some pretty rough crowds sometimes. And uh, you know, when they do, oftentimes they'll call us and they'll say, hey, we're going to bring in such and such an act, a little bit concerned about it, and they want to hire officers, or they want to put together some kind of, of enhanced security measures, because they want to bring this venue in. It always comes when you invite a certain artist in, and you realize what you're bringing in to the community, there's a security excuse me, a security component, a security cost that goes with that. And uh, I think that uh, some of the owners here I see uh, realize that and they've done some, a very responsible and a good job. Okay. That was not the case. We did not get any notifications. We didn't know that the security measures weren't in place. And those were some of the concerns that we were trying to address currently. Um, the hearing was held today and uh, that is now going to go to the April 3rd hearing for the hearing office on the uh, use permit. The use permit is something completely different than the security plan. It's the, the business's ability to operate this live entertainment in this case. The security plan is the ability that's tied to the use permit. And that's what we're investigating right now. There's a process in place that's going on. So that's kind of two investigations. One on the criminal aggravated assault, one on the security plan violations. 
and uh, we're looking at both of those and trying to attack this uh, holistically as a problem to figure out what is it that we can do to make sure that 